Let us discuss today about uh, statics. So we uh, jumped to trajectory planet, planning sorry, last Thursday. Yesterday we made uh, our uh, practice uh, lecture on trajectory planning and uh, the, the students that were present here yesterday, not so many uh, uh, to, be, to be honest, uh, they uh, developed a, uh, the code to, to build a trapezoidal, trapezoidal velocity profile. Okay. Now we will jump back to the statics and of course tomorrow we will discuss about actuator and uh, sensors. Then the students on mechanical engineering will end with this lecture, actuators and sensors included, and of course all the practice that will be related to differential kinematics because we haven't started yet about designing any controller and this is so something that uh, we will start doing in next uh, class that will be next uh, Tuesday next practice class next Tuesday okay so let us discuss about statics statics is uh, here it is uh, uh, within the chapter of differential kinematics for a reason that will be clear in a few minutes and it is related to the uh, kinetostatic duality. We will discover this concept uh, in a few uh, minutes. Uh, statics uh, is uh, the study of the relationship between the uh, force moments at the end effector and the joint torques. Okay, let us see what we do mean. First of all, a little bit uh, of uh, preliminaries that uh, usually really I mean, those are basic uh, uh, concepts that uh, should be very uh, basic and trivial and already known for the students of mechanical engineering, not necessary for the student uh, of uh, uh, computer science. We will not go into the details, of course, because uh, we don't have uh, uh, the time, but uh, I need just to uh, recap a few concepts and uh, basically to, uh, to have a common notation on terminology. Okay? So, if you have a rigid body, a force is a vector applied in a point. Okay? When I do discuss about force, the concept of a vector applied in a point is always uh, embedded. And if I have a system of forts, I can always reduce that uh, to two forces with uh, uh, it, its own point of application. Okay. Now, we, we decide, uh, um, usually, uh, usually we decide also, we need also the concept of couple, that is uh, two forces, a couple of forces, with the null resultant, so the algebraic sum of those two forces is zero, but with the parallel direction, the null resultant, of course, uh, the, they, they need to have a parallel direction and uh, the same magnitude. Uh, if you, I mean, you can easily uh, understand this, those two forces are providing only a rotation to the, to the rigid body without a translation. And this couple is characterized by a plane of application and an arm, that is the direction uh, between those two directions, and the direction that is the normal to the plane. A generic system of forces can be reduced to a force and a couple. Now, just a brief recap of what a moment of a force is. If I apply a force F in a certain point, P, the moment of the force is uh, given by this cross product. So the cross product of uh, the vector position from the pole to the uh, point of application of the force multiplied by the force itself. Now, since uh, this is a cross product, the resultant 
lies on the uh, perpendicular to the plane where the two vectors belong with uh, the right hand rules. So first, basically, the right, uh, the right hand rule says that uh, uh, if I have uh, A cross multiplied B, the resultant is C, and C sees the first vector superimposing the second one in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, and you can uh, um, uh, memorize this as uh, X, Y, Z. So, X, Y, Z. There are a lot of, uh, of, of uh, heuristics in order to memorize it. This is one of uh, among uh, several. The magnitude of the resultant is uh, the area of uh, the geometric figure that is obtained by the two vectors A and B. And if they are parallel, it's zero, of course, okay? Because the area is uh, zero. Uh, if I have a different pole, I can compute uh, the moment of one pole with respect to another by this uh, uh, formula. Now, when I discuss about uh, uh, moment, it does have sense to say that uh, the moment is defined with respect to a certain direction. Okay. Now, we are not going to the details, this is very easy, but what is important is that if I have a force, this force is the same, and the moment associated to this force is the same for all the poles belonging to this direction A. So it means that I can, I can say that the, the moment is being computed with respect to a certain direction, rather than say that this is being computed with respect to a certain point. Um, if I have uh, several forces applied in a certain point and uh, a certain pole, I can compute the moment of uh, all the forces uh, by applying this formula. So the sum of all the moments is, I mean, computed in that way. If the forces apply to the same point, uh, I can uh, simply consider the resultant of, resultant of all the forces. If I have two forces, it holds that the moment is given by the vector connecting the, the position of the two forces cross multiplied one of the two, if this is a couple. Okay, if this is a couple, it means that they have the same magnitude. And this is why here is written F and minus F. Now, when I have a rigid body rotating around a certain direction or axis as a robotic link, the torque is a scalar because it is the projection of the moment along the axis. We will discuss uh, later on about uh, the dynamics and we will be able to compute the dynamics of a generic kind of uh, robots. This is only for the students of uh, uh, computer science. Now, any system force can be reduced to one force applied in a certain point, the resultant, and the moment applying in the same point, in the same uh, point, in the same pole. Okay. My rigid body will stay in equilibrium, so with the null velocity and acceleration, with the necessary sufficient condition that. Uh, the resultant force and moment are both null. Now, I do know that uh, if you haven't done those concepts uh, earlier, this recap is totally useless. But if you have done something, it's just to, you know, to, to bring to memory some of those concepts and to remind a little bit the terminology. Okay? But, if you haven't done, please refer to the textbook, and especially in the appendix, there are some concepts of uh, uh, mechanics that can be useful. Okay, so what are we going to do today? We are going to, to try to understand what is the relationship 
between the end effect or forces a moment that here in this draw uh, is uh, denoted with the blue arrow and the joint forces on torque. Now let me just uh, stay here a few seconds on the terminology. Uh, the end effector, force moment. We do know that uh, we have uh, a uh, linear force, uh, dimension three, and a moment of dimension three as well. Now, those two vectors are collected here on an end effector vector of uh, dimension six that I should uh, denote as end effector force moments. Sometimes, uh, in order to, I mean, to be more compact, we will denote it as forces. And if this is this has dimension six, it means force plus moments. Okay, depending on the context, the the terminology moments could be eventually uh, omitted. Uh, in some places, uh, you may also find the terminology range as uh, different communities, several communities, use this word in order to denote the six by one vector of forces and moments, so branch. Be careful uh, depending on the context of where are you reading the, the term force moment. Okay, and this is dimension six because of course it is a physical quantity. A linear force in the space is dimension three and a moment in the space is dimension three. Okay. On the other end, we have uh, N joints. And N can be whatever. A two-link planar robot up to uh, seven degrees of freedom uh, robot that we have in the lab, uh, up to 20 degrees of freedom robot that we also have in the lab, the, the, the more. In, that, in uh, that case, of course, tau is a dimension that um, depends on the robot. And we will usually talk about uh, torques. But in that case, we are discussing about forces for the prismatic joint and torques for the rotational joints. The uh, orange vectors in the draw, they represent for this robot that exhibit uh, uh, six rotational joints the direction of rotation for the sixth joint together with, let me say, a kind of sign of rotation. So we want to understand what is the relationship between those two vectors. And uh, what we are basically going to do is to study something like that. Let, let me consider uh, as external force the weight of this object. So now, I'm holding this object. It means that my end effector is experiencing a vertical linear force, okay? The statics will tell me what is the torque that I'm feeling in my arm. This is the purpose of the today's lesson, okay? Clearly, in this configuration, my joints are experiencing a certain torque, the whole rotation. In this configuration, the force applied in the end effector is exactly the same, but you can uh, intuitively understand that the torque that is experienced by uh, my joints is different. And uh, in this, is different again. Actually, this is zero, okay? Because the, it is projecting on the structure of my arm. Let us assume that this is fixed, okay? It's not moving. In the, in the vertical position, it's zero. Also, in the vertical, it does a direction. In all the other configuration, I'm feeling different torques. In order to stay at equilibrium, the statics, uh, is related to the equilibrium. Then we will study dynamics in a two uh, lectures starting from now, but statics is related to equilibrium. Okay, so let us 
uh, find the relationship with a very brief, let me say, uh, result related to the elementary work concept. Okay, so first of all, what is the elementary work that is made by the joint talks? It is given by uh, force multiplied displacement, so if I'm talking about so the linear concept, but now talking about the rotational one, this is given by torques multiplied by the displacement uh, the Q. Now, just let us just notice that this is the transpose of the torques. It means that I'm multiplying in one by n multiplied n by one vector. The Q is n by one. It means that the result is a scalar. Okay, this is, this is defined as the elementary work made by the joint. Now, the elementary work made by the forces at the end effect or now is it a little bit more uh, subtle because i have to consider a linear displacement of the end effect and the elementary work is made by the linear force so this is a three by one vector multiplied by uh, a three by one elementary displacement of the end effect plus now we have uh, the issue of representing the elementary orientation displacement. Why I have this issue? Because I know that uh, a representation given uh, with a minimal orientation representation, uh, its time derivative does not have uh, a physical meaning. A an elementary displacement uh, is related conceptually to the time derivative, and so also is uh, elementary displacement doesn't have a physical meaning. The way to bypass this problem is to define the elementary uh, orientation as the angular velocity multiplied the t. Okay, because the integral of the angular velocity doesn't have uh, doesn't have a, a physical meaning, but this, I mean, this is physical meaning. It's the rotation, elementary rotation around omega e. Sorry, but this is the elementary rotation. Now, I do know that the p is related to the q by means of the Jacobian. Okay, because I know that the relationship is e is equal. JP function of the configuration multiplied by Q dot and omega E is equal to Q uh, sorry Q dot 
and in the same way I do know that omega e the t is related to the joint displacement by means of the orientation job problem. And this is the geometric one, okay? Because we are talking about uh, angular velocity, not time, time derivative of the orientation representation. I can collect the sum of those two terms in one single uh, matrix uh, um, uh, expression by putting in evidence on the right hand side the Q and so I do have that this is given by the end effect of force moment multiplied by the geometric Jacobian multiplied by the Q. Now mechanics is, uh, tell us that the elementary displacement are equal to the virtual displacement and this is what we just found okay the elementary work made by the, the two forces and just uh, uh, recovery here. Now, why we're discussing about uh, the equilibrium? Now, the point is uh, the robot is in static equilibrium if and, on, and only if those two terms are equal one each other. If I just simplify for any the Q, if I just simplify uh, the joint displacement, it means that I got the relationship between the joint torques and the end effector uh, force moment. And this is given by the transpose of the Jacobian. Actually, this is quite interesting. Let me come back to the previous page. Uh, it's easy to see that here, you're looking at this one. Okay, it's easy to see that here, I have, I, I'm writing here so that the, This is the relationship implied by this one, this equality here. If this is to be true for any displacement in the joint, it means that basically tau transpose is equal gamma con A transpose J. A, I mean, this equality is totally equivalent to tau, this implies basically the same is here, so tau is equal J transpose gamma A, so the same as is here. Now this is quite interesting and uh, beyond uh, the passages that we made in order to find it, I know that uh, for you, also for me, the, I mean, the, not part of our background, I want to stress uh, the relationship uh, in, uh, in the, with the um, blue background here on the screen, because this is the relationship uh, that we'll, we will use a lot during the, the, the class, together with uh, its, uh, you know, counterpart, that is this one. So now we should start understand it a little bit, the concept of duality. And we will see some example in order to try to understand a little bit this concept. The Jacobian, the geometric Jacobian is um, a matrix that represents the mapping from the joint velocity to the end effector linear and angular velocity. And its transpose, so J transpose, represent a mapping or is related to the mapping of the end effector branches to the joint torques. Okay. This 
has very important implications in the understanding of what a robot can or cannot do or the way it moves, the way it is uh, programmed. Okay, we will uh, start working with the, with, the, with the Jacobian next week for the kinematic control. But this, let me stress the importance of the concept of Jacobian in understanding robotics. Okay, now we have an altern alternative way to, to find this relationship that is written here. I mean, just to help you understanding, let me, I mean, let me just propose you an alternative way. We know that uh, in physics, uh, sorry, we know that uh, uh, in physics, uh, the power is given by the velocity multiplied by force. Okay. So in the end effector, the concept of power is given by a scalar that is obtained by a rigid body, by the linear and angular velocity multiplied by force moment. Then for the joint motors, I have uh, the joint velocities multiplied by the joint torques. If the robot is at equilibrium, it means that uh, those two powers should be equal one each other, and thus we got the same relationship. Okay, so this is an alternative way in order to try to understand uh, better what is the, 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 the point. Now, uh, here on the right hand side, uh, you, you can see two figures holding a, a load, a lift, and uh, actually the transpose of the Jacobian is what will make us understand why if you're carrying the shopping bag this is more or less the configuration that you are going to have okay you just have uh, your arm stretched down if you want to exercise you use this uh, not natural position because in this case you want expressly to in this case i mean uh, uh, exploit at maximum the lift at your end in order to excite to use the the the, the muscle in this case but the joint torque at the maximum so this is not an energy uh, convenient configuration but of course because this is made on purpose while this is a little bit more convenient if i want to carry a load and the reason why is embedded in the jacobian of the arm so we will try to understand why, I mean, uh, the physics tell us that this is correct, of course, but, okay. Now, the concept of kinetostatic duality uh, can pass from this draw that may be a little bit similar to something that we, we saw in the past matrices so we always find matrices in our classes also also in robotics not, not only in a state space linear system and let me okay let me see a little bit what i'm looking at first of all the kinetic static duality is the relationship between the geometric Jacobian used in the velocity and the geometric Jacobian used for the forces. Okay. Now, the mapping that I'm studying is a mapping that goes from the end effector linear forces and moments here i mean it's very small but you should uh, read it from from the pdf file or from the textbook but here it is written that uh, let me that gamma cone is dimension r not six we will understand it later it's the same as for the end effector uh, uh, velocity sometimes uh, 
you know, for example, in the planner uh, robot, it doesn't have sense to, to consider the end effect of velocity as a six dimensional vector, because you can never obtain, for example, linear velocity going out from the plane. So in a similar way, for some of the robots, we can consider less degrees of freedom, uh, less than six degrees of freedom. Okay. But now, what is the point? The point is that my mapping goes from, in this case, the dominium, that is uh, the right-hand side of the draw, via the transpose of the Jacobian, you see here there is an arrow, to the codominium, that is tau belonging to Rn. Now, the transpose of the Jacobian do have a null space, okay, that project onto the zero element in the case. Let me see, this is something that uh, a linear algebra tells me, that transpose of the Jacobian is a null space, and it means that if I take any point here, any point here means, uh, sorry, I don't know if uh, it is updating, yes. Any point here means uh, that uh, a physical force at the end of factor, it is projected on the zero element at the joint. What does it mean? That the joints are not feeling any torque. How this is possible? Well, this is not very difficult to understand. If my arm is totally stretched and I experience a linear force in that direction, this linear force is projected into the mechanical structure, but is not exciting any of the degrees of freedom of my robot, okay? And this is, should be imagined as fixed as well. Uh, so in this case, I do have a null space that has a physical meaning. The physical meaning is that the linear forces that are projected here, that are taken here, are projected into the null space, into the zero element of the joint torque. All the other are projected in some values, so linear force here, so the weight of this load is a linear force here, I do need to apply a certain torque here in my wrist to avoid this movement, okay? But for example, I don't need to apply any torque in this degree of freedom, because the force is here and the moment that is applying is uh, in that direction, trying to make my wrist rotate in that direction, not in this one. So here I'm feeling zero torque for the wrist. Okay. This information that we are just, uh, we are just uh, uh, looking at somehow in an intuitive way is embedded in the Jacobian because it is here. Now, what is the relationship between the Jacobian and the transpose of the Jacobian. What is the relationship uh, is given by this property that holds for any matrix? This is uh, okay. Now the image of the Jacobian is equal to the orthogonal of the null space of the transpose of the Jacobian. And uh, on the other end, the null space of the Jacobian is related to the orthogonal of the image of a, a J transpose. Now, let me try to understand this concept. The null space of the Jacobian is something that uh, is quite interesting because uh, the null space of the Jacobian 
is the set of the joint velocity that do not project on the end effector. So the new space of the Jacobian is given by all the internal motion, all the velocity that do not cause my end effector to move. So here I'm moving my arm in a new space of my Jacobian, okay? Because uh, the movement that I'm making are not causing a movement of the end effector, okay? So this concept here is strongly related to the transpose of the Jacobian, because actually this is the uh, orthogonal of the image of the transpose of the Jacobian. Okay. And this is something that we just uh, uh, discussed, uh, and we will see also for uh, anthropo. I mean, in a, in a couple of minute, minutes for an anthropomorphic robot, what does it mean that the end effect of linear angular forces uh, belongs to the null of J transpose? I just show you for uh, for uh, an arm. Actually, the the lady, I mean, the, the figure holding a lift is uh, doing the same. Uh, a lift, uh, a load is uh, a vertical linear force due by gravity. And if I, my arm is in that, uh, in that configuration, it means that my muscle are not experience any load to, due to the, the any, for, any, any torque due to the load, but uh, this is uh, absorbed by the structure. Of course, uh, everything is propagated until the shoulder. And if you bring the shopping bags for uh, several hundred meters, uh, what is hurting you is the shoulder and the fingers. Because, of course, in this, in this discussion, I don't have the finger, but the finger needs to, to make it. They feel, of course, the linear force. Because those are degrees of freedom that I'm not considering in my discussion here. OK. Now, next slide is rather complex. And if you if you want to understand it, take your time, or you can discuss. You can discuss uh, with me later on. But let me say that uh, uh, this represents uh, the, 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 the really the uh, kinetostatic duality. I'll try to give you a brief. Uh, a brief uh, explanation of those uh, arrows uh, and and uh, uh, colored set and then uh, as, I, as i told you you just take your time and if you want to to try to understand it uh, we, we can discuss it later we have uh, a fourth set here let me start here this is uh, q dot projected by means of J on, uh, uh, this is V. The symbol is different because I took this uh, snapshot from a PhD thesis uh, of a German guy and he's using a different, uh, a different uh, symbol. But this is J, okay? So this is the projection of the differential kinematics where here, in the yellow, no, in the yellow, sorry. Oh, well, let me make the yellow. Here, I have all the joint velocity that map somehow in the end effect or linear and angular velocity here, okay? Then, I also have the null space of the Jacobian that maps into the zero element. This is something that uh, we already saw in uh, differential kinematics. Now, we have just saw the mapping below in the previous uh, slide, and uh, now we do understand why we represent graphically from the right to the left, because here I have the end effector, this is uh, 
gamma con e for us so this is v con e this is gamma con e that is projected here is an error by means of j transpose onto tau okay and here I have a null space in the end effector uh, forces and what it is to understand is the relationship between those set okay the set are related one each other those are related one each other it means that uh, velocity and force are uh, uh is not updating it's not updating just one moment Okay, the network is working for some reason. It's not updating. Yeah, not this. The jump board is not the first time that it happens. Do you have uh, any question from uh, remotely while jump board? Synchronizes back. Okay. Okay, let me try just to close and reopen as usual. Yes, it works. Yes, I, I mean, just the the, the, the green circle around those uh, four uh, sets. Okay, this is one something that I, I wanted to to stress. So the point is that uh, the the image of the Jacobian is related to the null space of the transpose of Jacobian because they are orthogonal one each other. Okay. So now we we should try to understand with some examples and later on that uh, configurations that are uh, appropriate for uh, a velocity transformation may be not appropriate for force moment transformation and we will try to understand this uh, later on because the jacobian uh, and the Jacobian transpose, they exhibit two different properties depending on the configuration. As I said, take your time to understand this concept that in the beginning can be a little bit difficult to understand. Now, let us try to understand the transpose-based Jacobian inversion with the mirror, with the, with the glasses given by the transpose of the Jacobian. And let's try to understand, uh, to give a physical interpretation 
to this uh, algorithm. Mm, no, uh, Jamboard uh, today not, is not working properly while uh, the network uh, is actually fine and uh, the speed of the network is good, I can see from other applications, but Jamboard uh, is not uh, synchronizing. Okay, let me do it from here. So now I. I I may try to understand the interpretation of, from the physical aspect of the transpose-based Jacobian inversion. I have uh, a J transpose here, and I know that uh, this represents the mapping from n the factor linear forces and moments to the joint torques. It means that uh, the right-hand side can be interpreted as a virtual force that is projected onto the joint. This interpretation of virtual forces will help us later on when we are going to develop the control algorithms in the, the Cartesian space. So let us uh, imagine this uh, as a simple uh, planar to link robot. K multiplied the error is a kind of virtual spring, okay? Is a virtual force that is proportional to the error. If I want to go from here to here, this is the error, is a vector. If I multiply this vector by a K, it means that for me this is a virtual spring and I want to come to the zero element. So it's a virtual force kind of spring that is projected in, onto the joint torques. Of course here I have a velocity but I can imagine a kind of ideal dynamics. J transpose is projecting a virtual force from the end effector to the joint. Elastic virtual force. Okay. Okay. This is a physical interpretation, but now I can let me see if this works somehow. I can try to to understand a little bit better also the concept of, of null space of J transpose. Uh, see, the network is uh, totally fine, it's fine, it's fast enough, uh, it's a problem of dream board and it is not the first time that uh, I experience in, in, in the classes, okay. Now, let, let us try to understand the concept of J-transpose and also why uh, this algorithm doesn't work if KE 
belongs to the new space of transpose. And let us do it with the anthropomorphic arm. Well, we know that this is a singular configuration, right? So it means that uh, I do have uh, a singularity, kinematic singularity, that prevents me to impose a certain uh, velocity at the end effector. And now we will discover that this also has consequences in the uh, end effector uh, forces. And uh, okay, in this case, linear forces. Now, I would like to ask you, if you apply a linear force that is parallel to this factor here, just imagine that the structure is in this configuration and you push in that direction. What is the movement that you are going to impose to your robot? by applying linear force here. If uh, this is my, my robot and apply a linear force here, what is the movement? This one, okay? So this is going down, let me say. Or I need to counteract uh, because I'm experiencing some, not, maybe not this one, but I'm experiencing uh, a torque here and, and here. Yes, this one also. No, it's, it's this one, sorry. <laughs> okay. If this is my arm and I need to go there, the virtual force is K multiplied He, but I don't have any possibility to provide this end effect or linear force by using my joint torque. Now, if I apply a linear force here, none of the three torques here is uh, interested or is excited by this linear force. On the other way around, if I want to use uh, one of these, those three joint torques in order to provide the linear force in that direction, I don't have any possibility. And this is what uh, we found by other way when we studied uh, the inverse kinematic algorithm based on the transpose of the Jacobian. And we say, the, pay attention that if your end effector goes here in this uh, segment, the algorithm stuck here and doesn't move anymore because of some reasons related to the Jacobian, then now we can interpret her by means of the transpose of the Jacobian. Okay. Okay, let us make a small break. If you have questions, Otherwise, let us make a small break uh, and we, we meet at uh, 11.10, okay? okay.